Hey guys, I'm here in Franklin, Tennessee with David Ellefson. How are you? How are uh -huh. you? How are you? So we've been here, what, five weeks? Yeah, about five weeks, yeah. Um, yeah. Doing what? Doing this. Pre doing this, yeah. yeah. Pre-production, yeah. a new album, and I'm growing my beard here. Yeah. Getting in like Tennessee five vibe. Shadow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, man, every, every day, I hear great stories, right? <laughs> yeah. Elefson has the best stories. And by the way, I'm reading this amazing book, and that's why we're going to talk about the book, yeah. right? And you're part of the story. I'm part you're of the story part of here. The story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And also and help narrate it, which the, yeah, the audio book. And okay, your, your third book. Right? Yeah, third book. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so. Tell me about it. So, okay, so the first book I wrote, Making Music Your Business, A Guide for Young Musicians, uh, was me as a musician. It was on the Euthanasia uh, album. I started writing it. It hit me, thought, you know, if, if my heroes like Gene Simmons or Angus Young or somebody wrote a book about what the music business is really about to musicians like me, a young up-and-comer, I would have bought it in a heartbeat. So that was what that book was about, kind of a how-to book. Then uh, in 2013, I think it was, uh, my first memoir published called My Life with Death. And that was really the story of my life up until that point. And so much has happened um, in just the last <laughs> yeah, five, yeah. six years. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And you've, seen, you've witnessed a lot of it, and, and you're even a part of a crucial turning point, certainly with Megadeth, and you've been a good friend and a supporter to me with coffee and... All the other things that we do on the road and just kind of big picture stuff as, as adult musicians now, not just uh -huh. young guys, but as kind of looking at how the new landscape of music, uh, record company, managing, artist developments, all those things. And so that's what this book is about and uh, more life with death. And that really picks up mostly kind of starts from when I came back to Megadeth in um, February 2010. In fact, that's the opening page. Uh, a friend of mine, Dale Steele, who sang in a group I had for a period when I was away from Megadeth called F5, and a good friend of mine and a great supporter. He had some, some very good words for me. He said, be prepared now for when Megadeth ends the next time, which yeah, hopefully, you, hopefully will be a retirement. I'm halfway. Right? I'm reading the book right yeah. now. I'm halfway, and uh, it's amazing. But I want to do this uh, interview, this talk here, yeah. because every day we talk. Yeah. We talk a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always, yeah. In the morning, we, we are here in this house uh, together 24 hours, basically. Pretty much, <laughs> Pretty much Living yeah. together, us, uh, yeah. making music and uh, drinking coffee. Yeah. Uh, what else? And talking, by the we way. We right here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, making music, talking about life, life. many different yeah. things, mm -hmm. and uh, talking... Uh, well, we're talking to the cows as well. The cows, you know? so out, the cows yeah. We have a beautiful pasture. Well, the funny thing is, is you and I, uh, we met over music. We, have I think, first met at a NAMM show when yeah. Chris Broderick was still in the group. And um, I knew of you, of course, with, with your history with anger yeah, right. and as a guitar player. Um, then we then connected in Bolivia. Uh, yeah, let's talk this. Yeah, about Bolivia. That. Yeah, so yeah. there was a sh uh, a, uh, an event called Metal uh, All Stars. All Stars, right? yeah. And... Um, and which originally was going to be this Europe tour, and then it turned, suddenly turned into two shows in South America. I was just uh, reading about <laughs> right, it. You're book, reading about but, it. Yeah. And there was a whole bunch of us Joey Belladonna, Vinny uh, Apice, Carmine Apice, of course, his brother, uh, Gus G, Jeff Tate, a whole bunch Zach of us. Zach Wild. Zach Wild, yeah. yep. We're all heading to now, all of a sudden, suddenly, Europe's gone, two shows in South America. So it was uh, La Paz, Bolivia, Bolivia and Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. We go there, I find out Angra is opening. Yeah, um, yeah it was a festival and Angra was playing and yep. you guys were closing yep. the festival, right, yeah. in Bolivia, which is is not a country that we, you know, maybe it was the second time I was there, so yeah. it's not a... Second time for me too, yeah. It was not, yeah. It's not it's a country that we normally don't, it's not a part of the route when you go yeah. to South America. Yeah. And then the next day, or maybe two days Two days later, later Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, yeah. yeah. Which was not, was not a, an Angra show, was... Which is funny, you know, so when I wrote this book, I like to have my friends be part of the story because we were all there. And I think it's fun to have include my friends, you, of course, being one of them, but um, childhood friends uh, uh -huh. the, who tell the story of when we moved from Minnesota out to Los Angeles. We meet Dave Mustaine. 
you know, my friend Brad Schmidt, my friend Greg Handovit tell very, they really color in the whole scope of the story because I just remember what I yeah, saw yeah, yeah. or what yeah. I remember. They remember other parts of it. And, um, and, and, uh, you know, it's, it, I remember, it's funny, Dave had mentioned one time about the four Gospels in the Bible, that there's a reason there's four of them, because four different guys were all there, and they all tell a different, different story, different but, they, of the but story. they tell the same story, right? Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was a funny, very witty way to kind of view these books, because... It's great, because in the book, you have, well, you're telling the story, but yeah. then you have... yeah. Uh, a comment from Frank Bellow from Frank Anthrax. Bellow weighs here in. and yeah. then, uh, Kiko weighs in. <laughs> yeah, I'm here many. Uh, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're cool. many, many times, pages. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Dan Donigan from Disturbed. K.K. Downing from Judas Priest. Yeah, so Priest. you have the same yeah. story from the vision of the other person that yeah. was there too, right? Yeah. And, and especially Rock and Rio, because you and I are both big Judas Priest fans, right? So to have K.K., who we were on tour, we had just released Rust in Peace. They had just put out Painkiller. We did the whole North American tour uh, in 1990 and uh, January 91. We all then went down to Rio yeah. to go do no, a, Rock and Rio. Okay, let's finish the first story. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, we, <laughs> so you, many. we met in Bolivia. Yeah, yeah. Right? And um, Gus D should be there, but he was not. Yeah, the promoter was, it was very sketchy. Yeah, Gus said, I'm, I'm not coming. I don't want to go. Take and I chance. was there. Yeah. And then I got a call in my room, like, hey, Kiko, can I learn whatever, 10 songs for tonight yeah. just to help? And the some of them were for Jeff Tate from some, Queens, right? Yeah, Queens, right. Yeah. And Dream Theater because. Uh, um, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Dream Theater. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you cannot not learn 10 songs like Queens, right? Dream Theater in a, like five, five yeah. hours. That's, yeah. you know, like, oh, Kiko can do it. No, I. <laughs> I'm not able to. But do you kind of did. But I, I, I uh, the Black Sabbath. Yes. Uh, for, you know. Yeah, uh, playing with Vinny. With Vinny. Super cool. Big hero. Vinny, yeah. And uh, one Queen's Reich. I said yeah. one song <laughs> I can learn. <laughs> then I learned yeah. a song. And then uh, in Sao Paulo, you guys asked me to go as well. Yeah. Uh, to be part of the show. And I went. It was great because then we. See, and that's a part of the story we just talked about at breakfast today, ironically, where you said, actually, Angra wasn't on that show. I just was called. And you gave me the whole story, which, because in my mind, I thought, well. If Angra's, Kiko's here, he's If Kiko's playing. here, I guess he's playing on the whole tour. But you got to fill in some details. Well, actually, uh, you know, Angra only played La Paz. But then uh, because I was now learning these songs, I, yeah. I showed up out as a courtesy to yeah, basically yeah, yeah. play to help the concert. Of course, I out. wanted to play with David. I wanted to play with Jeff Tate, big heroes, yeah. you know, and then why well, not? Well, here's a know? critical thing um, to musicians and kind of in general is, is I... There was a shift about ready to happen inside of Megadeth, right as you and I were playing together that week. Uh, Dave had called me. Um, I was in Bol uh, Bolivia. He had called me about the possible Rust and Peace reunion, which I talk about in the book. So he and I are having that conversation. I'm aware that there might be a lineup change inside the band. You and I meet, and I go, wow. Same, same, like, same man, day, Kiko same. can play anything. He's an animal on stage. I'm going, I should get his number. So we exchanged. And, changed, and, you, yeah, and you had just told me, you said, I just moved to Los Angeles. Yeah. Maybe thinking about another kind of big, big gig thing. Literally, yeah, people think that I moved to, uh, to, uh, to the United States because of Megadeth. No, Actually, you were was, already there. Uh, I was here yeah. already, yeah, in, in yeah. L.A., and then, you know. Yeah. Things are easier. And literally two months later, so we tried the Rust in Peace reunion. It doesn't work. Two months, I mean, literally a few weeks later, Dave calls me and says, hey, I think I found our guitar I player. And I said, I said, who is it? He said, uh, he says, Kiko. And I said, oh, I know Kiko. I just, I just played with him. He, does, he goes, you do? What, you, can you reach out to him? I said, yeah, I'll hit him right now. And, and what I was going to say was, hey, you're in Megadeth, because when Dave makes up his mind, you're in. Oh, you're yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like, there wasn't an option, right? You're yeah, in, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I said, hey, do you want to join Megadeth? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you had just gotten was, home, I think, from a tour with Angra. Yeah, you were this sick. Is, yeah, <laughs> you were yeah not people kind of don't know, because yeah. Yeah, uh, people think it's like, oh, it's, everything is great. Yeah. And when you, I was already like two years mm -hmm. uh, in, in L.A., and really thinking like, what am I doing here? Yeah, you know, like yeah. with a, uh, my wife and a little baby, yeah. I, I came from Europe and uh, I did a very nice uh, clinic tour with Ibanez. But the last gig, for some reason, I lost, you know, the airplane, something happened. And then, you know, this, yeah. this and I was like many, many hours in the airport yeah. in France and waiting to come back and all this, you know, tour things. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hassle. And, and then I came home. I was sick. And it's like, what I'm doing here, let's go back to Finland or to Brazil, yeah. you know, like... And then know, the text shows place. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. What am I, I doing? Know, yeah. I'm doing here. <laughs> anyway, so like, like, like really f feeling horrible. Yeah. You know, feeling like... Yeah. 
what I'm doing here. What does my life come to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like nothing's happening. Yeah. And then um, got a, your, your email. <laughs> yeah, it's an call, email, yeah, uh, yeah. May I call you? Yeah. And then so, yeah, of course. And then yeah. uh, you call me. It's like, yes. Yeah. And and now, I thought we had like, you learn three songs, but you reminded me that I think it was no, actually four. Four what songs. What were the songs? What were the So, so, and then I was in bed, like really sick. And then, then Dave called me. Yeah. Like, few hours, you called me. Yeah. And then Dave, you know, an hour later, yeah. start talking. Yeah. And I was coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Dave was staying on his phone, I was like coughing. And he said, "Okay, call me when you're <laughs> when you're better." <laughs> I was like, "You know, it's like funny. He just missed the call." You know, it's, if I, to interrupt on that. In my first book, "Making Music Your Business," I interviewed Billy Sheehan, um, and uh, bass player, of course. And he made a comment that I used as a quote. He said, "In our line of work, and often in life, you will have to make your most critical decisions." at the absolute worst moments of your life. So, I mean, here you are. You're in L.A. My life is, what does this come to? I'm sick. My yeah. guitar's lost at the airport, yeah. whatever. And all of a sudden, hey, you want to join Megadeth? You know? <laughs> and it's, exactly what right, happened. Yeah. And then I, the, in the next three, four days in bed, with, I didn't want to play guitar because when, yeah. you know, you don't feel... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Why? Trying to play. So I was just watching all the Megadeth <laughs> videos and concerts and right. interviews, everything about it. Um, and then when I felt better, called back Dave and then, I, and you too. And then, uh, um, it was a, uh, an audition, right? Yeah. I was expecting yeah. to have an audition or something like a lot of, a line of guitar players waiting in a room. To the truth play. is he was already in the band. He just <laughs> thought it was an audition. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, then I was like, do you guys want me to, to send a video or something? And you guys said, yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, didn't feel you like already this. had the job. <laughs> yeah, and then I did, a, I, I did a Hangar, Symphony, Trust, and Holy Wars yeah. in like in two days. But you guys already sent me a ticket to come here to Nashville, yeah, yeah. right? Before the videos, yeah, yeah. you know? So, so for this saying, audition. You were, you, were, you were already in. <laughs> and then I, did, I, so I, got, I have to send a video. So they, yeah. they probably they want to yeah. see me playing Megadeth yeah, songs, yeah. not you know, because you can find any video of me playing other stuff, other you know. Stuff, yeah. uh, and then I send the videos. I should actually post in my channel. I have those. You videos. should, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I should. It's like it's not. I remember them, yeah, great, because it was kind of just your guitar and you, just, and, you yeah. and you playing. It wasn't yeah. like a full body shot. It was just, no, just my hands, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> just playing <laughs> parts, see my face, which yeah. sounded great. And you know, because I remember the, what Dave said. He goes, you know, he has, understands and he plays this Brazilian jazz you know the nylon string um in which you know the guitar position in megadeth was you know dave is the real gutsy rowdy rock and roll player and then this very other kind of smooth legato this whole other style mm -hmm. and you're perfect i mean that when we played in 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 brazil mm -hmm. and bolivia i was yeah, just yeah. kind of like man, Thanks, man your touch and you know you can tell a lot about how a guy plays just by the touch of how they touch the guitar mm -hmm. you know are they like ah, all claw handed or is it sort of finesse and you yeah, know, yeah, beauty, yeah. you know, and you. and you had that, so it was Thanks. easy, yeah. easy fit, yeah. And then I came here, and there was no audition, no, it was like me and Dave. Yeah, but well, you went to breakfast, I think. <laughs> yeah, right? breakfast. Like, <laughs> yeah, having yeah. a coffee, driving around, and Dave was show, he was showing me the the area here with the the Civil War. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> American battle, history. American history. Well, you because know, like, you know, let's face it, Kiko, we know being in bands that it's it's about this. Can we hang out? Yeah, Can exactly. we hang out? You man? see, yeah. if you want to be a, like a musician, professional musician, yeah. it's more. About, of course, you have to be a great player. Yeah. You have to know the songs. Yeah, you have yeah. to be prepared and yeah. ready for a gig, but you have to I be a nice say, person to be with. I right? always say, if you're in the room or you're getting the call, we already know you can play. You know, we yeah. already know you're already that part's done. We, oh, we of yeah. course you can play. You're, that's done. Now let's hang out. Yeah, let's can see we, how, yeah. You know, can we can we coexist? Because again, we're in the yellow submarine <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of the exactly. tour bus, the airplane, yeah, exactly, the hotels, exactly. the yeah. studio. Like we're the house yeah. we're in now for weeks, months, years yeah, exactly. at a time. You know, and this is uh, something. Because in your book, there's two lessons in your book, for you, for you, two lessons. Always say yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. And then another one is my mega death. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want to talk about the always say yes. Sure. Well, okay. So I learned that lesson quickly when uh, Megadeth had disbanded in 2002. Uh, Al Petrelli, who was the guitar player at that time, became a dear friend of mine, and he had done a lot of sideman work for Alice Cooper in his big years with the. Uh, um, uh, what was that record? The trashed record. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big, big huge yeah. resurgence yeah. with with Alice, 
and then had done a lot of session work in, uh, in New York, and um, I learned a lot working with him, both as a musician and just kind of how it works the to, vision, the, yeah, the... to not be in a, he, you know, because he looked at me in Megadeth, he goes, wow, nice life for a part-time job, you know, because, yeah. you know, we would work for two months and then we'd be home for a month, you know, yeah. it's like, this is a great life to be a, a, an owner and a founder of a rock man. Yeah. Al didn't, didn't have that luxury, so he hustled, and yeah. so I learned a lot from him. So he was the one who told me, he goes, he said, listen, from here on out, say yes to everything. He goes, once in a while, you're going to double book and you'll have to unwind. Yeah. But better to be overbooked than underbooked, you know. Like and the airline companies. Yes, exactly. Yes, we, we know because they bump you off the flight, right? But, but uh, you, you know, like in business books and all that, they yeah. always say you have to learn how to say no. Or like uh, to say no, not to yeah. help, but yeah. 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 you have to learn to say no because yeah. you, you should focus on one thing. Yeah. And what you're saying no, just say yes to everything. Be present everywhere. Be present everywhere, yeah. And then things... <clears throat> because what I find is, is, is no man is an island unto himself, nor were we put on the earth to be a solo project, right? We're not a solo effort. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are very much meant to be collaborative. As humans, we're a collaborative species. Oh, yeah. And we're meant to work together, to be together. And you know, then through that process, you find your role. What is my role here? You know, even in this very room, we find our role sometimes. Mm -hmm. On different days, they change. Mm -hmm. You know, some days, the brunt of it falls on one person. Other days, I'm meant to just kind of sit back, listen, have a, you know, maybe not say so much. But just being in the room is enough. That's all that's required. Oh, yeah. And and in my, in my uh, as we call it, my EMP label group, our empire, as we call it, we call it stay in your lane. Like when you're driving, stay in your lane. Don't drive over here. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, you know, just stay in your lane, man. And, and that... But you got to be on the freeway. You got to be on the highway first, yeah, and okay. that requires yeah. saying yes. So let, saying yes. Let me in the room. Let me in the room. And once I'm in the room, I kind of figure it out and see what it is, and then you. So learn what was room. like? What, what was it like when you the Megadeth kind of finished, right? Yeah, in, yeah. 2002. Then, it 2002 ended. 2002 ended, well, and then. Ironically, your one of the one about of the first it. calls. Well, the first the feelings I had about it were initially because 2001 was a was a rough year. It was a lot of work. The music business was changing. We we went through the 90s really as an effort to reinvent as a band creatively. To, creatively to stay true to who we are, but yet from a business you sometimes have to adapt and improvise and recreate yourself so that you can stay relevant, you mm -hmm. know, in the in the in the music world. Um, and we survived that for us. But 2001 had been a long journey um, of about six or seven years of a lot of that. And we, we were burnt, man. We were burnt. And so when Dave called me up and just said, look, I, I, you know, I, I quit. I got to step away. Um, we were, you know, we left our business intact, but we essentially, everybody went their separate ways. And I, I um, one of the first calls I got, ironically, was from Alice Cooper's camp calling me oh, to yeah, play yeah. bass. And I didn't, and I told him, I said, listen, man, this, thank you for the call, but this thing just ended. I'm kind of trying to figure out what's up. Fender, uh, Fender Amplifiers and Guitars, they're mm -hmm. right by me, by my house yeah, in yeah, Scottsdale, yeah. Arizona. They called me with a job uh, that I kind of felt, wow, I might, I don't even know if I'm qualified to basically to build bass amplifiers, to uh -huh, uh -huh. create and sort of be the product manager of a line. But they told me, they said, look, if you work here, you're, you're playing days. Then it would be like a nine, nine, to yeah, 9 to 5 job, five, yeah. kind of and I totally just, different thing. Oh, right I went, you. whoa, I don't know that I'm ready. That's a pretty hard turn, you know. So I, I, I ended up, Alice had to move forward, and so they got Chuck Wright from Quiet Riot to play mm -hmm. bass for him. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I felt a deep sadness, like, oh, man. I As a big fan of that. Yeah, so and I, I didn't say yes, and it kind of, the train left without left, me. Yeah. And I went, whoa, that, that sucks. And then the Fender gig, they ended up getting someone else to do it. So I sat there with nothing, and I went, "Oh my gosh, like so, I'm, like a drowning man, you know." So that would be quickly. a saying yes for both, and then figure out. Yeah, figure out, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a yeah. lesson. Yeah, see, that's a lesson. That's a lesson. So, so yeah. yeah, because if you say yes, I'm bringing this because the case that they're playing Bolivia, yeah, uh, with you, mm -hmm. was the same because it was a shitty promoter. Yeah, there was no reason for me to help. A shitty promoter, right? You know, right. there was yeah. no reason to. The reason was from the heart to play right. with you, yeah. to play with Vinny Apsi, yeah. to Jeff Tate, because of, you know, yeah. my heroes. But for the festival, for the promoter, there's no reason yeah. to go there and work for for free because yeah. it was yeah. for free it was just to help a promoter. <clears throat> yeah, you know, he should be paying, yeah. right, or right. something like that. But I said yes. Yeah, and in the See, end, I'm here. You, you know, <laughs> you, so yeah, I've learned that too in my in my 
my journey here. Um, some days the payoff is uh, a financial one, and that's fine. Other times it's like what you said. I, I just want to go play with that. Exactly. Yeah. I just want to. Make... What is what is success? Is about is money in the bank, or it's like. It's sometimes it's, it's an emotional payoff. Yeah, of you know, one of those that I had was uh, Randy Bachman from Bachman Turner Overdrive. Uh -huh. Who uh, B B Bachman Turner Overdrive had an album in, in 1974 when I was like 10 years old, and it changed my life. It's the whole reason I'm here. It's the album that got me into this. And uh, during my season, uh, probably the season. I thought it was Kiss Alive. Kiss Alive. Well, then it was that. Then it was <laughs> <Okay>. that. <laughs> Kiss Alive, Kiss the Story came right after that. But I got to play with a lot of my heroes, Ronnie Montrose. Randy Bachman, uh, when I was working at Petey uh, in like 2007 or 8, uh, he was, we were working with him on some amplifier project and they asked him to play at, a, at an event during NAMM. And, uh, and I said, can I play bass? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, let me in, you know. And I immediately called Jimmy DeGrasso, who uh, I knew from, from my time in Megadeth, and playing with Montrose. Because I knew Jimmy could walk in, just mm -hmm. like you did at, in Bolivia. Walk in, bang, and done, play, yeah. play it. And uh, so, and all of a sudden, I was standing on stage playing American Woman and taking care of business with like, like that's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my album collection. There, he's there, like he's right, right there, there, you know. And I'm, I'm standing there playing, and it was just one of these like, you know, it wasn't yeah. about money. It was about just a yeah. bucket list. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was my feeling when I when I played with you guys in Canada, my first show, Quebec. Oh, yeah. you remember? Like, yeah, I do. It's yeah. Huge festival. They're like. Yeah. 70,000 people. Raining. We did, yeah. Raining. <laughs> yeah. Slippery stage. All of the worst elements. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. Yeah. Uh, no sound check. No. Uh, <laughs> rehearsal. We rehearsed for two days. Look. Yeah. Uh, two days, but we didn't play the set at all. No. It was like all about the gears and whatever, yeah. Yeah. tweaking things, but <laughs> we didn't play the set. We played a few songs. Yeah. And then next day, Quebec. Open Air Festival, yeah. uh, Rolling Stones one day, yeah. second day uh, Foo Fighters, and then us. They were headlining. So yeah. headlining. headlining. The yeah. cameras, yeah. you know, like the all cameras. this. Like, but whoa. wasn't it great? I mean, I remember Chris Adler was playing drums for us, yeah. and it felt like four rock stars. I felt like Kiss on stage. It was like... No, for you, like playing the same song for a third yeah. years, like, okay. But, but, but again, here's, the, here's my... Like, <laughs> you might have been like struggling, like holding on, like, oh my God. But yeah. for me, I was just looking around no, just going, cool. so this cool. feels like it yeah. was when we had Marty and Nick and back in glory days of the band, and again, being this KISS fan, you know, you know, Gene and Paul and Ace and Peter, you know, kind of the early 70s days, you know, was kind of my era, you know, when I, when I got into their music. And, you know, it's like, you feel like this is bigger than the four of us on this stage right now. Mm -hmm. This is a sound, it's projecting. You can see the excitement from the fans. They're looking at it like, oh my yeah, gosh. It was really cool, yeah. It was great, yeah. right? And the scene of seeing, seeing you and Dave the silhouette from, you <laughs> from know? where you were, yeah. Yeah, so that's left, cool yeah. because now you're used yeah. to see from the, you know, from, <laughs> yeah. from the audience, yeah, from yeah. the crowd, and suddenly yeah. you're there, it's like, wow. Yeah, there the, they the, are. The, this, yeah. Yeah, this it's your Randy of, Bachman moment. Yeah, exactly, there they are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so another thing in the book here, somewhere, you it's mentioned the, the My Megadeth. My huh? Megadeth, you know, yeah, the, it's toward the back. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, yeah. the dystopia moment yeah. here. Just say yes, My Megadeth, a new musical journey. And uh, you helped this. invent my Megadeth. So in 2006, no, uh, 2015, we were here in Nashville working on Dystopia. And um, you and Dave and Chris Adler had been working a little bit doing the pre production. And then I came in to get started playing. And I remember one of our first conversations in the studio. Uh, Chris Adler would say, like, we would maybe write a riff or play something, or we'd talk about an idea. And he'd go, yeah, my Megadeth wouldn't do that, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and we're like, my Megadeth. What's my Megadeth? And, and me and Dave would ask him, and and he said he goes, well, my Megadeth was so far so good. So what? You know, 1988. That 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 poster on my wall, that band that got mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. into this whole thing. They wouldn't play that song. Like they wouldn't. That riff wouldn't be cool to yeah, those guys, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so suddenly that became this benchmark. And you jumped in right on top of that. And so I mean, you're just as much part of the my Megadeth uh, mantra. Because you had a different perspective. You saw us when we first played Rock in Rio, 1991. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my and, Megadeth is the, the Rock in Rio, yeah. 91. The 90s uh, era Rusting of Peace, Megadeth. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, that's, yeah, that's my Megadeth. So yeah. 
And still now, when I see the riffs, okay, oh, this that's yeah. what I like. That's my mega death. You, that's a you mega understand death. what connects to And I think the whole minds. South America that we yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. This plus, whole... plus because of a language thing. You're, you're very, awesome. you know, you... It's funny, half of Megadeth is an international thing with you and Dirk now, right? Yeah. Um, in fact, I remember one moment on the bus we were in, I think, Belgium, and you are you and, and your wife being Finnish, so there's that uh, dynamic going. I think your kids might have been there. Dirk's talking like <laughs> Flemish, Flemish or French or whatever. <laughs> so I have like Finnish, yeah. Portuguese, Flemish. Yeah. French. It was like the UN. And me and Dave are sitting there just going, wow. I mean, like we know English, maybe a little bit of Spanglish. You know what I mean? But you guys are like, it was awesome to just see like, because we were in Europe and there it was. Yeah. But but you, you've you been really good. Your, your my Megadeth moments, uh, even today, really play out like when we're putting the set list together. And, and you like, we'll go to South America and you'll say, you'll go, you know, guys, the 90s is when when Latin America really got to know Megadeth. Yeah. And, and, and even the songs, like if we're saying too many words, how if you don't understand English, like sometimes those, those songs, they kind of go over everybody's heads because they're not connecting to the, to the lyric. Mm -hmm. You know, versus, of course, you know, Megadeth, like Guante Megadeth, yeah, the yeah, Symphony exactly. of Destruction, yeah, yeah. very simple kind of stuff that really resonates, that rhythm resonates well with the Latin America audience. Yeah. And so I think internationally, you've been a, a huge help with us in constructing our set lists as we travel around the world yeah. now. So in the end, my mega death is is a, is the uh, going back to your uh, first concept, right? Yes. Going back to the concept of the band, and that for any musician here, all, uh, anyone that is in a <clears throat> in a band, you have to always find the concept of a band, right. the sound, the the persona, the yeah. whatever it is, in and always. Go back to that thing because you know that's what yeah. the fans like. That's what you are in the end. You might get lost because you see other bands succeeding or see mm -hmm. other artists. Or maybe you want to try this, or you, maybe you want to do a song that is pop or whatever it is or heavier because you saw something, right? And then you start deviating from what you are, yeah. And then you always have to go back. This is me, yeah. Or this is my mega death. So it's good when you have other people helping you or in a band yeah. everybody putting everybody in check like this we, we, is we really went in dystopia which fortunately you were a big part of helping us you know you and chris adler helping reframe that internally with us and um and also um that album really was a was critical to reframing the real origins of Megadeth. And in a lot of ways, when I listen to Dystopia now, it's like this greatest hits because there's some stuff that sounds like it's on Countdown. There's mm -hmm. some fast ripping, kind of rust in peace, almost 80s sounding stuff on it. There's the Poison to Shadows, which is, and even Parts of Conquer Die that could be, you know, more a Tula Mondish, kind of almost balladish stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So to me, Dystopia's like, oh, dude, this is thrash, return to form. It, it, to me, it isn't that. To me, it's this sort of broad, in, all inclusive of the entire scope and all the years of the Megadeth right. yeah, history, yeah. and that I mean, what a challenge to make an album like that because there's a lot, totally, totally. a lot yeah. to draw from. Yeah. And that's what we were discussing a lot here, like in the last five weeks, because we we're composing a new album, yeah. so everything comes to mind, and you have to put in balance all all this, right? right. And we were talking about uh, Symphony of Destruction, which is the biggest song right, from right. the band, right? Yeah. And then he has great stories. I didn't know about it. Yes. The Symphony of Destruction <clears throat> was a symphony. It was. It, yeah. I mean, I, I mean <laughs> in the sense of... Uh, a metal symphony. Well, yeah, as, I, as we were I talking about it, because know. it's this little three-minute sort of, you know, pop metal song, if you will. Yeah, I because mean, for me, symphony, the, the that's what we were talking about. Yeah. For me, it's like the structure is like a pop song. Right. It's like a perfect... Right. It builds, you know, that's why he has all the little progressive things from Megadeth, yeah. you know, the guitars, the solos and all that, yeah. but it's... And harmonically, you know, the, the guitar during the, during the, uh, the chorus, na, 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 da, 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 that descending line, yeah. and it's funny, at that moment when we were in playing it, I thought, what if I put, pull up the bass line, do, 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 like, like, like come up, yeah, this yeah. sort of counterpoint, and we meet at the same note right there, dun, da, ba, da, da, da. we join in to take that lick down and then start the progression all over again uh -huh, uh -huh. and so yeah it's got these it's just and those are things that just totally happened in the moment i mean we weren't sitting around trying to be master composers those were very intuitive just cool moments that happened which is a cool thing a great song normally comes like, yes like to a, me the best close, right it the flows. best songs write themselves 
They really do. And there's yeah, a simplicity about, I mean, I look at Peace Cells, Symphony of Destruction, Sweating Bullets, Holy Wars, Trust, Atul Amon. These things well, just, like, you know, just, I mean, bang. They just like within in a couple hours. They just they, like, cha like yeah. a channel kind and of. Really just, you know, to me, music close. is spirit, you know, because it, 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 it's, it, it comes from, we're just kind of channels in, in down the fingerboard and out it comes, you know. And that's why some days we work on stuff individually or as a group and, and we're stuck we just eh, for some reason yeah, it's right? just not working yeah. you know and that's that's i think probably the hard thing when you're writing music on the clock it's like we got to get we got five weeks writing out we got to get done we got to turn you know there's this sort of the schedule and sometimes if the creativity doesn't come you just have to honor that and mm -hmm. then other times when you're not expecting it like we had even moments on tour last summer where you and me and Dirk would be in just riffing on stuff and yeah, all of yeah. a sudden like man ideas are flowing it's mm -hmm. like ooh, let's mm -hmm. let's capture that you know yeah 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 so, but tell me about the song. So, so Symphony, <clears throat> yeah, Symphony. So there was like this five and a half minute song. There might be a version of this really? somewhere, I, <clears throat> maybe I, on Worcester on one of the uh, the remastered oh, versions. Okay, okay. But it was like literally five minutes long, and it had the three verses and choruses. It had a, a Dave solo, a Marty solo, and a bass solo. A bass, a bass solo. Like a full yeah, like, showing doo, the, the... Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, it's kind of like kind of bluesy bass solo in it, right? <laughs> and one day when we were the countdown record, we were finishing it up, we were mixing it, and uh, Max Norman said, "Look, everybody, leave. Just leave me alone for the day. I need time with this song." <clears throat> and he basically forbid us to come in. Like, just so everybody leave. He had a vision, or yeah. Something? And he just said, "He goes, I got to work on this song." And Max is this very industrious, very intense guy, and. Um, and he uh, he sat and he worked on this and we came in at the end of the day and it was it's the song you hear now this little three minute chop down so got, he cut it to yep. the left of the solo Marty yeah. solo there yeah got rid of all the extra what's the Michelangelo you know carving the statue of David I got rid of everything that wasn't David oh, yeah, 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 it was yeah. one of those we had all this stuff mm -hmm. but it's like there's too many ingredients it, this isn't gonna taste right let's get rid of these ingredients let's yeah. get rid of this and pull it down and bang right. there it right. is right there. And the other one is like Holy Wars. You said there was no the acoustic. Yeah. Well, thing, we listened there. the other day because uh, online. I was just, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. talking to Chuck Beeler. Chuck Beeler happened to call me the other day, and I and I was on the freeway driving home, and and we were, and I said, Hey, where are there's these three songs uh, that me and Dave and Chuck worked on in 1988 um, before Nick Menza came into the band, and they were Holy Wars, what was to become Tornado of Souls. Uh, and and Polaris, and the music was done for all three of those. And and it's interesting how those three songs all kind of wrote themselves. Um, and especially Holy Wars. Holy Wars wrote itself musically, and Dave had that lyric, and it really just fell right in. I mean, mm -hmm. that thing just. He, I remember when he wrote it, and it was just like, wow, there it is. It just came to him and inserted into the song. Done. And there, there are a couple of things like it didn't have the little Marty the acoustic thing. Acoustic thing. Acoustic yeah, that we did once Marty came into the band. Uh, kind of the same like we're doing with you. It's like, hey, we got a guy who can play, you know, a cool little uh, nylon string part. Let's add that in. Mm -hmm. We didn't, you know, we didn't have that before Marty was there. So, and Dave sang a couple little vocal things, a little different during yeah, the right, halftime breakdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right? And uh, he sang during the solo part. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. during the solo part. He sang kind of a melody. Over yeah. it, and that's actually online on YouTube. You can go see that. I think it's the uh, uh, Holy Wars uh, Casey McMacken mix. But by the way, by the way, as we're here, YouTube channel, I'm gonna put a link where to find your book. Yes, right. Yes, because you, you, you can later. Get, yeah. Then I, I, <coughs> well, we'll, we'll put here below. We're gonna find a link to buy the book. Perfect. Right somewhere. I don't yeah, know because where, this is available through all the Amazon and Barnes okay, and Noble and okay. the big retailers like that. But then we're also gonna have the audio book. Wow. Yeah, so anyone can buy from anywhere. Yes, you know, so, and you know. I know that's great around the world because sometimes people are unable to get a hard copy by mail uh, to certain parts of the world, but you can always listen to the audio, and it's nice because you and me... Are... I, I recorded it. <laughs> you yeah. recorded it. So the soothing voices of uh, right, Kiko yeah. and David and great. Dirk yeah, yeah. and everybody. Dirk did, yeah, yeah. 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 And every year trying to get everybody. Most yeah, of them. yeah. I think a lot of them are going to jump in and do it, which I'm very thankful to them because, it, you know, I hate to... I don't mind calling in the, the favor to, to be part of the book because I think it really makes a great story and it's kind of yeah. like we're all friends remembering the story. Yeah. Uh, to, but to the people that were kind enough to, to be able to have the time to record and you know put that in, that's kind of an extra little step. So yeah, thank yeah. you guests for that. I appreciate it. So we were talking about mm -hmm. um, the Rusting Peace. So 
what was, was it like to to play in Rock and Rio that night? I was there in the audience. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I could see you struggling down there. <laughs> like you guys are dying down there. <laughs> like, uh, <you> know, <laughs> no, if you no shirt, you know. You have like it was the biggest thousand people. It was the biggest audience we'd ever played to up really? to that point in 1988. We played uh, Castle Donington at that time. So, it was called Monsters of Rock. Yeah, now yeah. it's called Download Festival. Then it was Monsters of Rock. It was with Iron Maiden, Kiss, David Lee Roth, Megadeth. Guns and Roses played before us, and Halloween. And in, 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 in yeah, and but then in Rock and Rio, that was 107,000 people at Donington. Rio, wow. I think, was 140,000. Yeah, it was a yeah. lot. It yeah, was, it was massive. The, the stadium, yeah. yeah. And it was, you know, that and thing. Was there like, and it was at like what a two-week event, right? I mean, it was it was uh, long. Yeah, I don't remember. Like back then, yeah, it was like it was a ten long. days thing, ten days, like yeah. many many shows. Yeah, I went to to two dates there. Uh, one the metal night. Yeah. So Which it was, was yeah. uh, Sepultura, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys, yeah. Painkiller, Judas Priest Pain, playing yeah. Painkiller. Queensryche. Queensryche and, and Guns N' Roses. Roses. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. other night, I bought it because I wanted to see Page and Plant. Oh. Yeah. yeah but it yeah. canceled, oh. and then it was Billy Idol. Which was okay. okay. Well, cool. I was not yeah. a big, big, big fan. Awesome. I, I yeah. wanted to see Page and Plant. Yeah. It was Billy Idol, and I mean, and Guns N' Roses as well. Yes, they played two nights. Yeah, they played two nights. I don't remember now. So like, uh, so that, that was an interesting thing because again, fast or rewind, 1988 and Guns N' Roses. We were on tour with Errol Smith. In fact, you can see it in the Paradise City uh, video. They fly. There's some black and white footage of them on the Concorde getting off at the airport at London. That was them flying from the Aerosmith tour to London uh, to come and play Donington. I see. And they were just kicking ass. And I mean, just. Just, I mean, slashing a bottle of Jack Daniels on the app. Right? Ah, just killing yeah. it. I mean, they were just so gutsy in rock and roll. And then two years later, or three years later, we're in Rock and Rio, and they're the Rolling Stones. Yeah, exactly. They're like, huge, oh my gosh, huge, it was huge. huge. Just amazing the, the, how, how they had grown. So what do, you, what do you remember from, from <clears throat> that? I remember Mark Friedman's guitar was so loud. Was it? That's what it, for me, it was like, oh, yes. Well, I remember my <laughs> bass sounded terrible because and what happened. And, and, and Dave, like, play, singing and playing all yeah. those riffs. I was like, man. Dude. Well, I remember I was, going back to the hotel later. I was 19. That, I was 19. You were young, yeah. yeah. So, well, a couple things. So, first of all, you, you know, it's, it was as much about the event. I remember at the hotel, uh, we were down at the Intercontinental Hotel, and, like, big pop stars like Debbie Gibson were there. Um, I remember like Prince. Prince, Prince yeah. Was there. I mean, there were big. Santana, Prince, yeah, I remember. Huge. Yeah, huge. Bi- I mean, big top big, big, level. Yeah. And we were, you know, coming up the ranks. And so to be playing with, you know, huge, yeah. iconic rock stars was, was, was cool for us. Um, when we went out there, I mean, we'd been on tour with Judas Priest. So we, we, our act was tight. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and I remember yeah. coming out. But, you know, you look out into that sea of people. And it's very impersonal because, I mean, the front row is literally so, yeah, like, <laughs> almost 100 feet away. I mean, yeah. you couldn't even spit and get that far. You know, I mean, there's a huge pit of, of cameras yeah. and photographers. Yeah, yeah. And so you're, you're kind of on display at the zoo. You know, yeah, yeah. you're out there playing. Um, but like a 45 one hour set or something I think like so, that? yeah, probably, like a one hour set. I remember the tempos yeah. were really fast. And um, as, as we did energy, back in yeah. those days, Dave would be like, look, we've only got an hour. Let's add an extra song and play everything really fast so we can <laughs> add the extra song in, which was kind of fun. Different be- than, differently than, than today that we have the, the click <laughs> yeah, track. Click everything track. Yeah, like everything's the very... Page, yeah. Well, and now because we're tied to some video to production videos, and yeah. lighting and yeah, there's other things. Which but back then it was more kind of throw and go. And like I say, I remember my bass because, you know, when the Base, when the cabinet touches the, the floor, it couples and it really resonates well with the nice big warm base. And I remember there, the, everything was on set cards, you know, so you could easily uh, move yeah, them yeah, on yeah. and off the stage. So I remember it's my exhausted. base is like, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's one of those things where you go, we got to go. You it's gotta like, go yeah. it's not yeah. about yeah. all yeah. the details, you know. And uh, so, how is it? How is it playing and touring for what? Thirty-five years? Yeah, a long time. How does it feel? You know, it's funny. And, uh, actually, be- better yeah, question. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Why am I do- Got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the truth really? of it is, <clears throat> this is all I ever wanted to do. I never had a plan B. I never had a backup plan. Uh, still don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. So I'm doing this <laughs> in the meantime. 
And um, I think a lot of these other things, you know, writing the book, the, the record label, the coffee company, these other ventures, you know, they're, they're fun things, but they are, are all a result of this. I mean, it all, yeah. you know, Megadeth is the magic carpet that makes it all happen. I'm very aware of that. So um, how important is to, you know, like tell this, all the stories, you know, like <clears throat> in a book, and also the, your base stories, your yeah, tour, yeah. that you tell all those stories to the fans. That's kind of how it's a lot of, of this... Building a, like yeah. a, a legacy, kind of a... Now, a lot of it started like that. We know really last year was 35 years of Megadeth. Um, really kind of right up until probably this week when made Dave and I, I think we met literally 35 years ago yesterday, or maybe now it's 36 years, but uh, 35 years. And so this last year uh, has been 35 years of Megadeth celebrating the albums. And fans started finding the coolest old mm -hmm. photos. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I started resharing them, like on Instagram yeah, and yeah. Facebook. I'd reshare them, and i put the hashtag, every bass as a story. And largely, it was about a bass. I'd see a bass, yeah. and, I'd, and to me, the bass was going, oh, I remember when I had that bass. I got it at this time. I used it at this show. I used it on that record. And I told the story, kind of the back story. So the bass has been my lifelong... So we're going to talk about... They just got this yeah, bass. This, I did. This, I, yeah, my yeah. lifelong companion. The, uh, yeah. the volume up. Oh, I saw. I just dropped the tuning, so you know it's funny. These um, this this bass is a brand new one. Jackson made it's a, it's a neck through import, and um, it's 35 inch scale, so it's which is good for the that whole. And it it's funny. It has that 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 same kind of tone that I had on my very first Jackson when I used it on. Uh, so far, so good. So what? On uh, like a hook and mouth and those licks, which were me, basically trying to be Stanley Clark, because on on the yeah. P Cells album, Chris Poland, uh, super into jazz, really into and... jazz. Yeah, both he and Gar, and we would always listen to the Stanley Clark School I Days see. album. You know, so there's a gonna. Yeah, yeah, the power chords and the bass. Yeah, yeah. And he'd always strum. You know, I love. Yeah, yeah. I just had this tone, and I was so like. <laughs> You know, on, on, uh, on, you know, the, you know, on, on like hook and mouth and stuff. Yeah. I, I just, there was like a tone that I, it, it kind of reset my thought about tone from that Stanley Clark album interesting, interesting. and brought oh. that in. And, and this funny, this bass kind of sounds exactly like that original. Jack and when I, I as we're here, show your main, yeah, original, I mean, it's, like you know, the, the silver one. Well, there, it's funny. We've got this one. He is actually not technically a. Signature it's model. not a signature, this right? This one here is. Um, I've got a couple. I've got a few of them there. But yeah, this was actually the one that we did um, for. Uh, this was the Rust in Peace. Uh, after we did the Rust in Peace uh, uh -huh, 20th uh -huh, anniversary uh -huh. back in um, uh, 2010. In 2011, we rolled these out as a. I don't have it plugged in, but as a um, as a anniversary uh, collection. We only did a limited number of them, maybe a hundred mm -hmm. of them or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, so I've had this, I did the Kelly Bird, I've got a, another current okay. model, and then I have another one coming out in uh, July, a brand new. So I've got you know, like four, four signature instruments that, cool. I've, that I've designed. And, and then the straps, Jackson. you have like a The strap straps. is awesome, yeah, the you strap is... Here, like, well, it's funny, this one was actually a gift oh, from... This, uh, this one has your signature. Yes, yeah, so this one was a gift from our friends in uh, Argentina. This, ba this one here... Was actually designed. Saludos a todos de Argentina. <laughs> yes, right. right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this one is actually from Groove Gear, and I designed it um, so that it would be double, dual adjustable, um, cool. both in the front and the back. And the the purpose of that is 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 so that with the bass, when I'm when I whoops, let me set that over there. When I'm playing live, um, especially as a pick player, it's important to be able to adjust the bass up and down this way. Uh -huh. uh, and be able to adjust it this way, right? So that it's that it, you know, I've got all that movement, and but a lot of it is so that I can anchor the hand to be able to, right? To be able to, you know, do all that uh -huh, fast uh -huh. picking that we do, and be able to mute. I can't do the kind of punk rock thing where the bass is really low and I'm kind of just, nah, nah, nah. yeah, yeah. I can't do that in in, in Megadeth because the tone needs to be really tight. So that particular strap by Groove Gear. Um, that uh, allows to have both of those adjustments, and it's not leather, so it's vegan friendly, which oh, is important. <laughs> <laughs> this one, however, not metal. vegan friendly at That's all. This came from nowadays, a, right? yeah, being yeah. vegan and you this know, one like... came from a cow in Argentina. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
My last thing here, yep. and we were talking about the Rock and Rio and uh, the My Megadeth, you know, yeah. Rest in Peace, and um, uh, Nick Mensa. Yeah. And uh, yesterday, uh, my partner in life, yeah. Andre Matos, I mean, for nine years, we, we, built, we built a beautiful history in Angra. Yeah. And uh, he died yesterday. And, um, and I remember we were on tour when mm. we had a concert uh, where, uh, when we got oh, the in news Albany. from Albany, New, Albany. Yeah, Albany, New York, when Nick and, passed. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we got the news from Nick. Yeah. And how did you know? How Condolences, how first of all, to you on that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we were here and yesterday when you got the news on that. Your, your whole world stops, you know. Mm. And, and because when you make music with somebody, especially for any period of time. You know, it's, I always say it's about the closest men will ever get in any kind of a relationship is basically oh, yeah. making music together because you really have to kind of, you know, lay it all out and you really have to expose yourself down to your mm -hmm. most kind of naked core as a, as a person. All of your insecurities, your fears, everything about you has to really come out. And when you have that experience like you did, um, um, with Andre that it's, 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 it, 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 it just shocks you when you hear it. It's shocking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. same with Nick. Even Menza, if, yeah, because you, you know? guys, yeah. And Nick and, guy, what it was like 11 years, 10 years. Old? Yeah. He was, was in the group, uh, nine, yeah, by like 10 years. 10 years he, yeah. And, and then we knew him for a couple years before that because when he was, was a drum tech, a uh, kind time. of an understudy on so far so good. So it's but when you build something with somebody, yeah. right? Like, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. That's and it was, like, those were fun years. They were big years. They were productive years. They yeah. were financially very profitable years. We had all these, you know, we grew up as young kids, you know, basically learning how to grow up into men in the public eye, um, addictions, uh, financial windfalls. I mean, sometimes the only thing worse than a band that has no money is a band who starts to make too much money hmm. because now you have to learn how to deal with that, you know, and that changes people. I mean, changes money, people. money can, can change people. And and we don't always know how to deal with it. And also you've got public, uh, you got sort of the public eye on you. Um, and that was a period. And creating a legacy, right? Yeah, with creating your, a legacy. With the albums yep. there, that you're gonna be playing those songs forever. Forever, like me, yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, and so when, when I remember when Nick died, and again, you were there, I, it was four in the morning, Dave called me, four, we were East Coast time in New York, upstate New York, Albany, and Dave called me, and I mean, just, he was devastated. And I was like, what the hell happened? And it turns out, you know, Nick had passed on stage playing with another one of our Megadeth alumni, Chris Poland. So, yeah. I mean, to yeah. make, and I called Chris. Chris and I didn't get a chance to talk for several months after that. Um, and uh, we've now since reconnected, um, which is great. But it, it's, it's interesting how I talked to Nick's uh, mother and sister and uh, has since even done an induction for him into the, was asked to do an induction into the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame, uh, mm. which was during NAM, And it was great to just relive stories about Nick. And now his book is out, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mega Life book. And I've read it, and, it, and it's, there's, there's just funny moments, man. He, again, if he could narrate in my book, he would tell things that I, I forgot yeah, about, yeah, you know. Sure. And so I think when you read Dave's book, you read my books, you read Nick's book, you kind of get the, you know, again, it's kind of the, the Gospels of Megadeth, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the, all the books of the Bible, if you will, of Megadeth that sort of tell the, you know, the story. And, and you know, what I think with, with me and Nick is we did get the opportunity to revisit a reunion um, mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it, although it didn't work out for us to continue on as, as bandmates, we tried it, and we let yeah. the fans know. So I think Dave and I felt good as as Megadeth to go. You know, we did try it. We gave it. We gave it everything we had to try to make it work. It just was not meant to be. So we could kind of put that away. Mm -hmm. And so with Nick passing, it wasn't this sadness of like, oh God, I wish we would have tried that. Oh yeah. man, I yeah. wish we would just would have picked up the phone and made the call. We had tried it. So I think there was a lot of peace in our world uh, about that Nick had moved on, and and yeah. and I think for Nick. He used to joke about this. He goes, ah, I'm just going to die on stage. And, ah, really? you know, you know, he would, and he would kind of joke almost to get a shock out of people. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. He even talked about it in his book when I read it that he, he said something like, I hope I just die on stage playing my drums. Wow. And so, and talking to his son, I knew he was at peace. He was very, Nick was very much at peace in his life. So when he, when he left, uh, I remember when my dad passed, you know, he and I had a great talk. He had called a lot of his friends. He was at peace, it seems, when he left the planet. So it's 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 nice to know when people are 
are sort of at peace with the people and the things mm-hmm. in their life mm-hmm. when when it's time to to leave Earth and and um, and I know Nick was so that brought me. I, I kind of laugh. I'm like the son of a bitch got to go out on on stage just like he wanted. You know what I mean? Like the final the final laugh was was Nick's. No. Ha ha ha. You know, um, and that's not meant to make light of him passing, but. You know, I'm also of the belief that this isn't all there is. You know, this life on earth is just a, a moment. And there's other things that we have a life beyond this. So to me, it's kind of like he passed through, got to rock it, blow shit up, and then he got to move on. Yeah. With Andrea, it was a bit different because it was 20 years, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was 99 when we, you know, went separate ways. <clears throat> and then throughout those 20 years... We did well. We didn't talk. I, you know, mm-hmm. last time I met him, yeah. like uh, face to face, it was 20 years ago. But of course, you know, he started his uh, his band, his stuff. You know, uh, Angra kept going uh, mm-hmm. with Edu, another singer. And of course, it was always weird to try to make a reunion. It's kind of it's, it's not a comfortable thing to talk about when you have a band already. Yeah. Uh, but we did talk a few times with managers or record label trying to make think about a possible mm-hmm. uh, could be one one concert could be anything right. it was always difficult always difficult and after 20 years this week like maybe five days ago Unreal. for the first time he mentioned to the Angers manager yeah. you know if Kiko's there too I'm okay for a reunion wow. can you believe this you know like 20 and years I get, I get goosebumps it, it took 20 it. years yeah for him to say to come but, to the manager, you know like if Kiko's there, because you know yeah. he didn't know if I would be yeah. able to do yeah. it. But if Kiko's there, I'm okay to to put. But it's kind know. of that same moment where you know there was sort of peace with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he knowing was, yeah. that there wasn't hostility, that there was sort of peace between you and him, which I know, you know, again, that's it, it makes you realize sometimes in 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 death, um, you know, death on earth. I will say because. Again, I think there's an eternal life here in play, but when we pass from this plane, um, that just how important it is to to have peace with our with our fellows and sisters. Totally. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. uh, we may not get that chance to like you know kind of think, well, I'll deal with that later. I'll call them one on, one other day, or yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, or maybe this will, storm will blow over and then we can talk. And sometimes, you know, it, it's it's. I, I find it comforting to hear that he made that comment, especially about with you, because yeah. it's almost like yeah. he was bringing yeah. you into the yeah. peaceful passing. You yeah. know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna give me the link for the book, where yes. to find the book, yep. and where to find the audio book. It's not ready yet, but yep. it's for sale. Yeah. It's a pre-sale now. Right? There will be the a book. pre-sale. Uh, the book is on a pre-sale right now. Um, and again, that can be Amazon, anywhere, all the major Perfect. booksellers, but we'll give you a link. link. Yeah, we'll give you a link. And then, uh, then for the audio book, when we get the pre-sale up, which will be momentarily, we'll get that, we'll put that up as well. Perfect. So, we're going to be here for a ne- another month. So, if you, wanna, if you want us to do another one like this, leave your comments, you know, questions. questions. And uh, yeah. thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, man. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks. Yeah. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, man. Awesome. Yeah.